Hi everyone, so guess what just came in the mail this morning? It's our new book, Advanced Taxation, a book that is based on the ICA syllabus for students writing Principle of Taxation in, Le in Level 2 and Advanced Taxation in Level 3. I'm very much excited about this book because it is based on the ICAC syllabus, strictly based on the ICAC syllabus, and also based on the new laws, the new acts, new regulations that governs taxation in Ghana as required by the revised syllabus of the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana. I'm very much excited about this copy uh, that has been released, published in the UK less than a month ago. And, uh, you know, everything about this book is superb. It's going to be assisting you, be your master guide in order for you to prepare one for your examination. And guess what? It is just 120 Ghana cities. And so we are going to be starting delivery immediately for the people who pre-ordered the book because we had a lot of students pre-ordering the book prior to its release due to the pandemic. But hey, it's now going to be available. And so you can call or WhatsApp 050 9296 050 and grab your copy of this book because I know that uh, it's going to be assisting you if you're a follower of my work. Simplicity in detail is something that I do and that is something that is critical. And I know this book is going to assist you in order for you to prepare well for your examination. Now, so somebody may be asking, hey, Shira, what are some of the things you covered? You can see that displayed on your screen, but we covered the Ghana tax system, tax administration in Ghana, fiscal policy, capital allowance, corporate tax liabilities, withholding tax, uh, chargeable income or chargeable gains, the three-tier Ghana national pension scheme, income tax liabilities on natural resources, petroleum operations, mineral and mining operations, standard tax planning, standard tax issues, professional conduct in relation to taxation, and any other thing that you need in order for you to prepare well for your examination. So what are you waiting for? Call the number 050-114-9296 and grab a copy today for your examination. I know this can assist you to prepare well for your examination. See ya. Hi everyone. So welcome to the live stream today. Very much excited for having you on the live stream today. It is week number or day number three in the first week of our journey towards the ICA May 2021 examination. I'm very much excited on the today's session because I want to share with you how you can pass the examination creating smart study plan. Because one of the things that you're going to understand is that many students are, are have asked, uh, issues with how they can design their study plan, their own uh, study kits to be able to assist them in order for them to prepare well for the examination and most importantly, pass the exam. So I want to share with you today how you can create a personal study plan. I'm going to share with you uh, six key strategies, six key steps that you go through in designing a personal study kit or study plan that will guarantee that you'll be able to prepare well for the examination and most importantly, be able to pass the exams in relation to that. So what are you waiting for? I see some of you guys joining on the stream. Give us a thumbs up when you join the stream. Or that way we get more engagement on the video. And YouTube and Facebook will be able to push the video so we can reach as many students as possible. And also, make sure that you comment in the chat box any questions that you have for me. Let me hear from you. Uh, what are the things you would want us to cover on the channel from next week as we begin with our live stream uh, uh, teaching sessions and topics you would want us to see on the channel let me know uh in the chat box in the comment box give us uh, a share on the video as well so that we get many students coming on the live stream or watching the playback to help as many students as possible together so we can uh make the world a better place so welcome to the stream i see some comments coming in i'm going to be looking at them from facebook as well as on youtube uh gary's the strong uh the Rage Gang said, nice one, okay. Uh, teach them love, Garage, okay. Ebenezer Arthur with a thumbs up in the page. Hey, Ebenezer, I hope that you're doing well and I hope that you enjoyed your holiday very well. So welcome to the stream, Ebenezer. I see some of you guys also joining us on YouTube as well as on Facebook. Put in the chat box any questions you have for me and also smash the like button on the video so that we can get more engagement and reach as many students as possible. So how do you prepare well 
for your examination? How do you structure your studies? How do you create a smart study plan or a personal timetable that will guarantee that you will be able to study and prepare well for your examination? Now, one thing you must know, and I keep on saying this all the time, is that you have to understand and know very critically that um, it is not enough for you attending lectures uh, and I don't, with all due respect, I don't care who teaches you, uh, it is not enough just to attend lectures and put the book down and think you're going to pass the exams. No, you need to have a personal timetable by yourself and go through the system by yourself in order for you to prepare well for the examination. Because lectures is just to introduce you generally to the things, but if you, it is what you sit down, do on your own, that guarantees that you become successful, you pass the exams, and most importantly, take your life to the next level. And I've had a, a lot of people reaching out to me and asking me, Ishira, how can I prepare a personal timetable? How can I prepare a personal study plan that will assist me to be able to pass the examination and so that is what i want to share with you today providing you with six key strategies six key steps that you need to follow that you need to go through in order for you to really really plan for the exams and most importantly pass the exams in relation to that so what do you do what do you do number one step number one now, I'm going to put this in questions format, so we're going to try to ask ourselves some questions and then we'll be answering the questions in relation to that. Number one is to ask yourself, which subjects or subjects am I, am I studying or am I preparing for? Now, it is very important for you to have an understanding of the scope and the course outline of the subjects that you are writing. Is it financial reporting, public sector, corporate reporting, taxation, advanced auditing assurance, uh, auditing assurance? What is the scope of the subject that you are studying? The first step in uh, creating a smart study plan is to first understand the scope of the subjects that you are studying. It's very, very critical. And I've shared with you on Monday as well as on ye yesterday about the fact that you don't have to overwhelm yourself with more subjects than you can. So find out what subjects are you preparing for in the May 2021 examination or whatever examination that you are writing. What subjects are you preparing for? What are the scope of the subjects? What are the things involved in the subject under consideration? That is very critical. That is very crucial because that will assist you in order to set this plan in motion. So the first question you want to ask yourself is, which subjects am I studying? What are the scope of the subjects? What are the outline of the subject is very important. If you are learning something like financial reporting, the scope of financial reporting and the outline is that you're going to look at the conceptual framework and regulatory framework. You're going to look at the issues about ethics. You're going to look at the accounting standards. You're going to look at the single entity financial statement, the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income, the statement of changes in equity, and then the statement of financial position as well as the cash flow statement as per IAS 7. From there, you're going to talk about interpretation of financial statement, then the consolidated financial statement. That is, this is the cost outline. This is the scope of financial reporting. So before you even decide on, oh, this is how my study plan will be, this is how my personal timetable will be, you have to first understand what is the scope of the subject that I'm preparing to write in relation to that maybe you are doing public sector accounting and finance what is the scope of public sector accounting and finance you must understand the issue about public financial management you must uh, come to the second per per uh, session that is the financial reporting in the public sector then you go to uh, public procurement then you go to public private partnership arrangement these are the four generic scope of public sector accounting and finance and under these there are various things that you need to discuss so the first step in designing a smart study plan is to know exactly the subjects you are writing the scope of the subject as well as the course outline that is the starting point that is the starting point in designing a study plan that will guarantee that you will pass the exams in designing a study plan that will guarantee that you'll be able to take your career, take your life to the next level in that case. So that is the first strategy. That is the first step in designing the study plan. Number two, number two, you need to ask yourself the second most important question, and that is, 
what is my academic goal? This is very, very important because before you decide to set out or to design your study plan or to design your own personal timetable, you must set an academic goal for yourself. You need to set an, an, an academic goal for the year. You need to set an academic goal for the uh, semester. It is not enough to say, eh, Ishira, me, I want to pass the exams. That is too general. That is too common. You have to be specific. What mark do you want to obtain in each of the subjects that you are sitting for? Maybe you are planning to write corporate reporting. What mark do you want to score? Maybe you want to score uh, 80%, 90%. Now, somebody will say, ah, Ishira, media just want to pass and go away that is where you start failing the exams it is not enough saying that i want to pass the exams no you must set a goal and be specific and tell yourself that i want to pass corporate reporting with 85 percent i want to pass uh, advanced taxation with 90 percent i want to be the best student for this semester you see the reason is that if you don't challenge your mind you cannot be motivated to study. So you need to set a goal that is realistic, but a goal that will challenge you to put in the effort, to put in the work. Because when you tell your mind, oh, maybe I just want to pass the exam and then go away. I don't have any issue with anybody. I just want to pass the exams and go away. If that is the goal you set for yourself, your brain will not be challenged. Your mind will not be challenged. You will not be motivated because passing the exams, you need 50%. And that is why people relax, they become lazy, and they will sit and sit and sit two weeks to the exams, then they start burning the midnight candle. Then they start working hard. But if you set yourself out, you set an academic goal for yourself that, hey, this exam I'm going to write, I want to score 80%. I want to score 90%. I want to score 75%. I want to be the best student for this examination sitting from day one, right from day one, you will start learning and not give yourself any excuses. So what am I saying? Before you come to designing your study plan, designing your personal timetable, you must, number one, Ask yourself, which subjects am I writing? What is the scope of the subject? What is the course outline for the subject that I'm writing? That is the first thing. That is the first thing you do. That's number one. Then number two, you must ask yourself, what is my academic goal? You must set an academic goal for yourself. That is very, very critical. Be specific. Don't just say, I want to pass the exams. You've got to be specific. Tell yourself, I want to pass the exams with... 20 75 percent 80 percent do something that scares you because i've seen a lot of people they are like oh insurance me there hmm. i don't like anything you know i just want to pass the exam and go away yo that is why you are not motivated to study that is why you keep on giving yourself a lot of excuses that is why you will struggle over and over again to get it done because you are not motivated enough, you've not challenged yourself to put in the work, to put in the effort. That is what, that why many students actually fail the exam. So how do you pass the exams? By creating a smart study plan. Now, how do you create the smart study plan? Step one, what subjects are you writing? What are the scope of the subject? What are the course outline? Step two, what academic goal have, I, have you set for yourself? Be specific. Don't be general. I want to pass the exams. That is too general. That is too, 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 too unacceptable. Be specific. I want to pass with this mark, and boom, you'll be in a better position to pass the examination. I see some of you guys joining the stream. Welcome to the live stream. Uh, I'm sharing with you today how to pass the exams, creating your uh, a smart study plan that is a personal timetable that will be able to guide you to prepare well for the examination and most importantly pass the exams and like i say all the time with all due respect i don't care who teaches you i don't care who your lecturer is if you don't sit down to study on your own whatever the lecturer does goes to waste it is like using the basket uh, uh, to go and uh, or sieve to go and fetch water. Once you put it in the water, you remove it, everything drains out. So it is not enough attending lectures. It is not enough being taught by the best lecturer in the world or the best teacher in the world. 
you have to sit down by yourself. Sitting down by yourself means creating your own study plan, having your own personal timetable. And that is what I want to help you today to draft in order for you to position yourself to pass the examination. And I've shared with you two steps in the drafting that. Step number one, what subject are you writing? Know the outline, know the scope. Step number two, set an academic goal for yourself. It is not enough to say, I want to pass the exams, but challenge yourself. Tell yourself you want to be the best student for this academic year, for this semester. Tell yourself you want to pass by 80%, 90%. Yes, somebody will say, eh, Ishira, if uh, somebody passed with 51 and I pass with 70, are we not the same? No, 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 no. You are the same, but if somebody is awarded best student for a semester or best student on graduation, that's a different level altogether. That is a different swag altogether. That is a different opportunity altogether. So you've got to open up your brain and make sure that you challenge yourself to do something better in relation to that. So give us a thumbs up on the video for those of you who are now joining and subscribe to the channel in case you've not subscribed to the channel. I see some thumbs up coming in from Facebook. Thank you guys uh, on Facebook. Um, Ebenezer, I'll say a Duchum, Nana Kumeu, Tim Plee. Senior Kewawa, Nana Oseya, Eugenia, Boss Philip. Thank you very much for the thumbs up on the on, on our Facebook uh, page. Ebenezer said, yeah, I did. Okay, that's great. Getting ready for the next classes. That is awesome. Senior Kewawa said, financial management, beta and capital structure. Okay. So let me open my slide here real quick. Mm, let's see what you got. So comment, put in the chat box the things you would want us to cover on the channel. Give me some topics real quick. Um, what did he say? Financial management, beta and capital structure. So that is business finance. Business finance. Uh, beta and capital structure. Okay. So give me some topics if you are watching. What do you want us to cover on the channel? And I'll be covering them for you on the channel. Mercy, Marian. Hey, Mercy. I hope you are doing well. It's been a long time. Jennifer Aban with a thumbs up. Thank you. Mohammed Kabia said, Ishira, when are you starting holding sessions for the ACCA March 2021 attempt. Um, we are starting our session next week, uh, Monday, God willing, in relation to that. And you can join that by enrolling uh, in a course online. You can visit insurapremium.com. I don't know the paper you are taking in March 2021. Enrolling in that helps you to get access to our lecture videos, our question kits, and you'll be able to have a one-on-one -on -one session with me as well. Uh, join us at Zoom sessions as you prepare well for the exam. So, Mohammed Kabai, you can visit insurapremium.com. No matter where you are located, you can make payments using any credit card or payment card and join us. Okuta G it said, good, okay. Samson Richie Yao said, nice, okay. Jeremy G. Ross said, thank you again, sir. Always a pleasure. Abena Sumwa Jandu said, Inshira, long time. Thanks for your time. Always a pleasure, Abena Sumwa Jandu. Jeremy said, I want to write FR, FM, PSA. How do I combine them? Mm, mm. FR and PSA is a good combination, okay? Jeremy, FR and PSA is a good combination. So I don't know how busy your shadows are. Like I tell you guys all the time, the more papers you write, the more money I make as a tuition provider. That is if you register with us. The more money I make as a tuition provider, but I'm not interested in the money, all right? I'm interested in your ability to be able to actually pass the exams. So if you have the time available and you think you can really work hard, go for the three. But if you want to do only two, you didn't indicate here whether you were writing two or something like that. But if you want to do only two papers, then PSA and FR is a good combination that can assist you in order for you to uh, prepare for your examination in relation to that. So, Jeremy Ross, uh, that is what I will say there in that case. Let me know if 
uh that was what you were looking for aide inshallah peter said happy uh new year sir and good to see you sir yeah thank you very much and many happy returns uh peter inshallah i hope you are doing well and you had a great uh holiday uh back there alexandria Marte said please reply my dm on instagram really you send a dm on instagram okay it will be replied don't worry uh i don't know what you sent but it will be replied uh if you want quick response also you can reach us on uh zero five zero one one four nine two nine six plus two three three zero five zero one one four nine two nine six uh you see the number uh display on the screen plus two three three zero five zero one one four nine two nine six on whatsapp and uh you will be reply immediately in that case but uh the instagram dm to it will be replied and you will get uh whatever message you were asking about senior kawawa said please talk about subject combination um, I think I, was, I mentioned this on Monday as well as on yesterday, and I made some references to that as well today. I spoke to you about the fact that when it comes to subject combination, you want to make sure that uh, it depends on the level you are at. So, Senior Kewawa, maybe let me know the papers you want to write, uh, then I can uh, give you some advice in that case. But if you're in level two, FR and PSA is a good combination to do. If you're in level three and you want to write two papers, corporate reporting and advanced taxation, uh, sorry, <laughs> advanced audit and assurance is a great combination to go for in relation to that. So it depends on the level you are at and the subject you have left and how many you want to write. And I can give you specific recommendation in that case. So senior Kewawa, maybe give me some specification. Uh, Mohammed said, I want to enroll for F7. What will be the cost? It is 390 Ghana cities per paper. I don't know where you are located, so you can check the exchange rates in your country. Uh, in that case, then you will be able to enroll on insurapremium.com. Jeremy said, I actually intended to add man accounting, but based on the lecture yesterday, I decided to write three. And I want to register all under you by next week ending. Okay, that's awesome, Jeremy. We are starting lectures next week, Monday. Actually, we are starting our Zoom sessions next week, Monday. So once you visit insurapremium.com, you will be able to uh, get access to uh, a register, enroll, and then you send us high on WhatsApp, then you'll be added to our WhatsApp page. Then you'll be able to get the meeting details when we start with our Zoom sessions from next week in relation to that. So that is awesome uh to hear from you and to be able to assist you in that case right so that is it about that so let me know if you have any questions please put it in the chat box for me in the comment box for me i'm reading all of your comments and we'll be replying to all of your comments on facebook thank you for the thumbs up on facebook and on on youtube as well uh, entry Ignatius, thank you for the thumbs up. Jeremy Rose, thank you for the thumbs up. Samson Richie Do Yao, thank you for the thumbs up. Really appreciate it on YouTube. And thank you guys for the share as well on YouTube. Sorry, on Facebook. These are on Facebook in that case. So, step number one which subjects am I writing? What is the scope? What is the course outline? Step number two set an academic goal. Don't be vague. Don't say, oh, I want to pass the exam. No set an academic goal i want to pass the exams by getting 30 percent did i just say 30 percent can you imagine that i want to pass the exams by saying getting 75 percent 80 percent in relation to that that is very very critical and that will assist you in that case step number three you need to ask yourself what is my current schedule this is very very critical to design your personal study plan or your personal timetable, you need to sit down and assess your current schedule, your work, family, sleeping, recreation, and other things on a daily basis as well as on a weekly basis. So what are your schedules like? If you are working, when do you go to work? When must you leave home? When do you close from work? When do you get back home? How long do you sleep? What, what, uh, how long do you take time on recreation? Now, remember, I didn't say fun. I said recreation. Recreation is very, very important. Because one of the dumbest things I hear people saying a lot is, all I can no play make jacket, no boy. 
you are broke and you are doing all work and no play make jack and dog work when the elon Musk and jeff bezos and the warren buffett are still hustling uh, jack mass they are still hustling and working you are there doing all work and no play make jack and dog work so recreation is very very important but you got to be careful about it so what is your current schedule look at it sit down look at your time it's very very important so if you are married, you need you need you, you know that I'm not a, I'm not a marriage advisor or whatever is it to advise you how to live your marriage life. But if you are married, you know you have to, and you have children, you have to make time for your spouse, you have to make time for the kids, they have to be doing their homework and all of those things. You need to take them out probably on weekends, those kind of things, and you need to go to work, you have a meeting, all of these things, you need to attend lectures. So what is your current schedule like? Then, the reason why I want you to know what your current schedule is like, it's because this is critical to help you to design your personal timetable. So that you will know, okay, uh, I'm doing this thing, it's not helping me. In a point, like, it will not do anything for me, so let me stop doing it. So you will know your schedule. Because one of the things you want to avoid as a high-performance person, or if you want to become a high-performance person, is frivolity. You want to make sure that you're not frivolous with your time. You want to make sure that you don't waste time on social media. You don't waste time watching telenovelas that don't add value to your life. You don't waste time uh, visiting friends, chatting with people that don't add value to yourself. So you want to make sure, what is your current schedule? One of the excuses I hear from people is that, oh, you see that? Hmm, I don't have time. Oh, hmm. You know, by the time I close from work and I get home, all my time is gone. You are lying. You are lying. You have a lot of time. If you examine yourself and look at your current schedule very well, you will realize that you've been frivolous in a lot of the things that you're doing. You, you realize that there are things you do that you don't even pay attention to. There are time you waste that you don't even know that you are wasting these times. So sit down. Look at your current schedules. What do you do? What can you change? What can you do differently? What can you do differently? Look at it. Very, very critical. 2021, you want to change your attitudes. You want to change your behavior. You want to change the way you do your things as an individual, as a human being, because that is how you become successful. So how do you pass the exams? How do you create a smart study plan? Number one, which papers are you writing? Number two, set an academic goal. Number three, what is your current schedules? What are your current schedule? What is it like? It's very, very critical. On a daily basis, on a weekly basis. That's the third step. That's the third step. That's the third step. Step four. Step four in creating your smart study plan is to ask yourself, what is my peak time? What is my peak time? Now, I spoke to you about this yesterday. This is very, very important. Knowing your peak time is, is to enhance your productivity. In other words, when are you mentally and emotionally sound okay because there are moments in your life that you are not sound there are times when you will pick a book and you can't even study so you need to know when your pick when is your peak time so that you can optimize and be more productive within that time because i tell people this all the time it is not about how long you stay behind the book but it's about how productive you are within that time so even if it is 45 minutes every day that you will get to sit behind the book as a personal studies, that is okay. If that 45 minutes, you can turn off your data, the TV is off, everything is off, and it is 45 minutes, you are not thinking about any other thing, and you're just focused on the book and being productive. When you do 45 minutes every single day in the next 16 or 15 weeks to the exams, I can guarantee you hands down, you will pass the exams with a high mark. 45 minutes a day, just 45 minutes a day. No BS, nothing else. 45 minutes by yourself. Your data is off, everything is off. Your data is off, you are not on social media, checking your Instagram feed, you are not doing other things, you are just focusing on the book. 45 minutes every day, I can guarantee you, it will change your life and you will see how productive you become. So ask yourself, what is my peak time? Like I mentioned yesterday, some of you, your peak time may be in the dawn. 
okay, where everybody is quiet, the kids are sleeping, your, wife, your spouse is asleep, maybe you can get up, do some work. Maybe some of you, it's early in the morning. Maybe some of you later in the afternoon. Maybe some of you later in the evening. Check when your peak time is so that you will schedule your personal timetable in those peak times. Very, very critical. Very, very critical. So the way you design your timetable is not just put it anywhere. Darby, if you put the time at a place, at, or you schedule times at points where you are not productive, you will not become successful. But let me issue a disclaimer here. There are moments in your life that you must be conscious about controlling your emotions and state of mind. Because you don't have control over what goes on in the outside, but you must decide on your own volition what, how you react to those things. Because a lot of things will hit you up, a lot of thing, w w things will try to affect your emotions, will try to affect your mind, will try to affect your productivity. But if you want to become successful and stand out, you need to be able to learn to consciously and on your own volition control your emotions and your state of mind. This is very, very critical. Typical example, uh, I don't like getting angry because I don't want to get angry. Uh, so anything that will make me angry, I just eliminate or eliminate it off. So yesterday evening when I got home, uh, I got a call from someone. And when I got a call, I just picked and the person was like, hi. And I was like, hello. And the person was like, why haven't you been calling me? And I was like, ah. you call me, you're saying, why haven't you been calling me? Now, one of the things I do is that when I get home, I want to really have a sane environment. So... I make sure that once I get home, so for the first 30, 45 minutes, I'm making sure that my data is off. I want to wind down, freshen up, eat something, slow down, think, because I have to work in the night. So I want to make sure that my emotions are balanced. I don't watch uh, the news or whatever it is to tarnish or to change my emotions. So when this call came, I was like, why don't you call me? And the person was sounding more authoritative. And I was like, so I was getting angry. So all I did was I hung up the person and uh, the person kept calling and I just hung, hung, hung up and then I blocked the line and that was all. That was all. Because you see, if you don't consciously, okay, if you don't consciously create your environment, people will take advantage of you and hurt you for no reason. And I started getting angry and I didn't want to get angry because it will affect my emotions, it will affect my thinking capacity, and it may affect my sleep as I was preparing to relax a little bit before getting up to work later on in the night. And that is the idea about that. So sometimes you've got to be conscious about your environment. You've got to be conscious about the people. You see, you don't have to be whatever. I don't care. You can't love everybody and be yourself. Sometimes you need time by your own self. So you need to be able to say no to everybody else and have time for yourself. It's called the me time. If you love yourself well, you should be able to create that me time. Me time. So if you find out that anybody around you trying to change your emotions, trying to affect your emotions, trying to torment your emotions, just you pick your phone. If it is blacklist, you blacklist the person. It's as simple as that. You blacklist the person or do something. Put the person on something. Make sure you create your own environment so that you can be emotionally sound. Because you some people, they are not thinking the way you are thinking. Maybe this year your resolution is to chatter as an accountant because you know that when you become a chartered accountant, you can make more money. And if you are making more money, you will live a better life. And you can buy a new car, you can buy a new house, you can marry this year, maybe you can buy your own house, okay? Maybe you can take good care of your wife or take good care of your children, and this is the goal you have. But there are some people, they don't have such goals, and they will try to torment you, they will try to ridicule you, they will try to make your life a living hell. Listen, it is called mobile phone, and that is why it has block, and it has uh, a lot of things, blacklist. Okay, delete everything, call wait, all those things, do it. 
do it and create your own environment that will help you to become successful. I cannot guarantee you how comfortable my life is by reducing the number of people that are in my inner circles. I cannot tell you how comfortable my life is. And it's very, very important for you to do that. So what are we saying here? How do you pass the exams? How do you create a smart study plan? Number one, which subjects are you writing? Number two, what is your academic goal? You need to set an academic goal for yourself. Number three, what is your current schedule? Very, very important. Your work, your family, your sleep, recreation on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. And then number four, what is your peak time? That is very, very important because when you're able to identify your peak time, that will help you to be able to push in your time and be able to design your timetable to be able to pass the exams in relation to that. Right, so these are the four steps. These are four steps. We have two more to go real quick. I see some comments coming in. Let me reply them uh, quickly. Senior Kawewa said, financial management principles of auditing and financial report. Which subject is principles of auditing? Are you talking about auditing assurance? Okay, oh. So if these are the three papers, I, do you want to write all senior Kawewa? Do you want to write all the three? Because if you want to write two, uh, I don't know which subject is principles of auditing. Is it auditing assurance or taxation you want to write? Maybe clarify that for me, senior, so that I can provide you with uh, better advice. Because if it is auditing, then doing the financial reporting and the auditing will be a good combination. That is, if you want to write two papers uh, in relation to that, and that would be a good combination on that level if you want to go for those two papers in that case. If you want to go for those two papers in that case. Joseph Manson said, good afternoon, Shira. Good afternoon, Joseph. I hope that you're doing well. Welcome to the live stream. Thank you very much, you guys, for the thumbs up on the video. And uh, Amina Amasam, thank you very much for the heart on the video. And YouTube, I see some of you guys giving us a thumbs up on the video. Thank you very, very much. I'm very grateful for the support and for the thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed to the channel and click the bell notification icon. Also share the video with your colleagues and others so we can reach as many students as possible and together assist many students. We want to create this platform uh, to uh, in such a way that people from all walks of life can come on, get access to quality materials to help them to prepare well for the examination, pass the exams, and most importantly, most importantly, take their life to the next level. My objective is not just for you to pass the exams. My objective is not just for you to become a chartered accountant, but my objective is for you to become a better version of yourself so that you can really take life into your hands and become more successful in everything that you are doing. So thank you guys for the support, and I'm very grateful for that. So how do you study? How do you pass the exams? How do you create a smart study plan? Which subjects are you writing? Know the scope, know the outline. Number two, set an academic goal. I want to pass the exams. That is not enough. Be specific. Set a, a mark on it. Maybe you want to get 50, uh, uh, 65%, 70%. You want to be the best student. Do that. Number three, what is your study, uh, uh, your current uh, uh, schedule? What are your current schedule? Family, uh, life, or sleep, recreation, all that on a daily and weekly basis. And then number four, what is your peak time? Step five. Now that you know the subject you are writing, you know the scope, now that you've set an academic goal for each of the subjects that you are writing, now that you know your schedules as an individual, now that you know your peak time when you are being productive, you go to step five, and that is design the timetable based on your peak time and your school's timetable. This is very critical. Step five, design the timetable based on your peak time and your school's timetable. Why is this important? Because you must design your timetable in such a manner that you review your notes and previous studies before the next lecture. And that's very, very critical. Because if, let's say, tomorrow you have public sector, you want to make sure that today you study public sector. 
Are you getting it? So today you will study public sector at your peak time so that you'll be able to go over the things that you did last week. Because many a time, I've had students, they come for lectures, and I'm like, what did we do last week? And guess what? Now that people are opening the book, uh, last week, <laughs> We were on um, 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 um. now that they are opening the book. Please, if you want to pass this exams, if you want to make this journey interesting, if you want to reduce your possibility the possibility of you failing the exams and writing the exam one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then you have to be committed to learning every single day and making sure that you study your previous notes before going for lectures. So design your timetable based on your peak time and your school's timetable. And always make sure that you review your previous studies before coming to the class. Because when you do that, you're able to recall everything you've done and your mind is ready to be able to add up. Because you see, things are not in isolation. Like for instance, when I'm teaching accounting standards, I tell my students all the time in financial reporting that... Um, I tell my student in financial reporting that uh, the accounting standards are not on their own. They are related. And many a time, they just take it for granted. And when we get to single entity financial statement, we are preparing the final account. And I present them with a question. And each footnote is an accounting standard. And I keep on telling them this all over and over again. And we begin to solve questions. That is when they begin to say, oh, OK, oh, OK, OK. And you want to make sure that you avoid that. So design the timetable based on your peak time and your school's timetable. Now, I see a question from YouTube, Yawasari, saying that, uh, what do you mean by peak time? Okay, your peak time is simply the time at which you are more productive. You are emotionally and mentally sound. What it means is that your peak time is the time at which you are safe or you are sane, and then when you pick a book, you can study, understand, and go over it. That's what I mean by your peak time. Okay, when you are more productive, when you are mentally stable, when you're not thinking about other things, when you, your mind is not cluttered, because information plus emotions equals long term memory. So if you have the wrong emotions with what you are studying, nothing sticks. So, yao, asare, that is what I mean by your peak time. I hope you get that. Yao, let me know if you understand that very well. So, design the timetable based on your peak time and your school's timetable. Because that will increase your understanding and assist you to pass the exams easily. But this is one thing you must understand. On your timetable, please make sure that you insert break. Don't sit down continuously over one hour without taking a break. No, it's very, very important. You take a break. Okay? So you sit down. Maybe you are doing FR, accounting standards. Yeah, you do IAS 16. You solve some questions. Uh, one hour. Get up and go and refresh. Now, I did not say get up and pick your phone and start doing social media. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. I didn't say break and pick your phone and go on Instagram. <laughs> hey, see you. See this drizzle. Hey, see this drizzle. See you. Hmm. These celebrities, they won't kill us. That is not what I said. If you are studying, social media is off. Now, what you do during your break is to get up stretch yourself out a little bit allow blood to flow throughout your body because you see when you sit for a long time uh it limits how much blood flows throughout every part of your body so every 60 minutes at most at 60 minutes you get up stretch a little bit get some liquid and take maybe some smoothie or just some water will be cool all right if you're like me just some water will be cool then maybe you get some biscuits or something like that so, or, yeah, something cool just to keep you going in relation to that. So, don't break. Oh, you learn for 60, sometimes 45 minutes, then you get and say, Oh, when it's tired, though, then you pick their phone, Instagram, 
then it starts. Facebook, then it starts. The, no, 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 no. That is not how you're going to be productive as an individual. Okay? That's not how you want to be productive. So, designing your timetable, make sure you insert break. Very important. Don't sit two hours without getting up. No. Like, like you become suffocated mentally. Like, you, like you start getting some reactions from your body. You get up, walk around in your room, that kind of thing, grab some water and drink, or grab some snacks, just relax, stay away from social media. You are learning, put off your data. Don't go and put it on and start, you see that Akos will send you a message and say, hey Akos, this, then you start replying Akos. Before you know it, you've put the book aside and you are chatting with Akos. And guess what, guess what? 99.9% .9 of the time, the message that Akos has sent you is meaningless, it's useless message. You don't need it for anything. It's just something that Akos is excited about and she has sent it to you. And so you don't have to reply. It is not urgent. What is urgent now is you are in your peak time, you are in your peak period, and you, got, you can study and become more successful. So that is what you want to do. Make sure that you insert breaks in your studies, in your timetable. But during these breaks, don't pick the phone and go on social media. It's not going to help you. It's not going to assist you. Please. Just stay focused in relation to that. So how do you design your study plan? Number one, which subjects are you writing? Number two, set an academic goal. Number three, know your current schedules. Number four, know your peak time. And number five, design the timetable based on your peak time and your school's timetable. Like I said, study what you will be attending lectures for tomorrow. Okay? Study what you'll be attending lectures for tomorrow. Do not enter any class without going over what you did last week, last, uh, week or in the previous uh, uh, lecture. Please, this is 2021. You've got to be serious and stop joking and stop being lazy with your life. You've got to be serious. You've got to be damn serious about it in relation to that. I see some comments coming in. Yawasari said, I understand it now. Thanks. You are welcome. Um, Shimoye Head Cushion said, how many papers do you recommend to sit at a time? We are understanding your concepts. Thank you. Um, like I said, it depends on your shadows. But if you're a busy person, maybe two will be good for you. Uh, you start with two, they'll be good. But if you're somebody who you think you have a lot of time available, go for three. It depends on you. All depends on you. So assess yourself first. What are the... Com uh, commitments you have. Maybe you are married, you, are, you have a child, you have some children, maybe you're a pastor in your church, or you are an elder in your church, maybe you're a minister, or you are uh, the driver of the minister, maybe you have some serious shadows. Check all of that, then you can decide how many papers. But like, I, like a rule of thumb all the time, uh, if you're doing ACCA, you can write one paper, but I see a minimum of two, so Two papers in relation to that can do. If it is ACCA, if it is one paper you can go for, and ACCA you have four times in a year to write the exam. So if it is one paper, go for it. But if it is two, go for it in relation to that. You want to select the papers that um, you can really get time to study with. And I don't want you to be blind in relation to that because one of the things that happens is that many people are blind. They are like, oh, by the grace of God, I will pass the exam. Please. Stop frustrating the grace of God. Stop. Give us a break this year and stop frustrating the grace of God. All right? So what I want to say is this. Don't, don't be over optimistic and say, oh, by the grace of God, I'm writing six papers. I'll pass all. Don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. Because many a times we set goals that we ourselves, we know that we cannot achieve. But we do it. I don't know. Just for doing sake. So be realistic. Go for two in relation to that. Go for three if you can. Go for four if you have the luxury available. So all of those things would depend on your schedules in relation to that. Senior Kawewa said, I mean, financial management, audit and assurance. Okay, so senior, if you want to write two papers, then possibly um, FR and audit will not be a bad combination. If you want to go for two papers, senior. Uh, FR will be a good, FR and audit will be great because FR has 
um, ethics there and it is in audit and then uh, some understanding of the accounting principles will help you as well in audit in relation to that so i think fr and audit will be a great combination if you are do, looking for these two papers to go for in that case shimoya said that uh pomodoro technique is great yes 25 minutes of working five minutes of break then continue this for a couple of sessions yes that is great uh for those of you who don't know about the uh, pomodoro technique last uh year i shared about that on the channel you can see it on the uh on the how to playlist on the youtube channel where we said that hey 25 minutes you take a break 25 minutes you take a break not take a break on social media i've told you that but you take a break to stretch a little bit sip some water and then you'll be good to go in relation to that so that is step number five so step one what did we say which subject are you writing step two what is the what is your set an academic goal step three what is your current schedules step four what is your peak time step five design your timetable based on your peak time and your uh school's timetable then step six step six this is the shocker be disciplined to follow the timetable irrespective of what happened this is where 99.9 .9 percent of people will fail you see it's one thing to have a personal timetable but it's another thing to follow through the timetable statistics have shown that 88 percent of people don't follow through with their new year resolution as a matter of fact by the third week of january they have forgotten about their new year resolution and their life is back to default in their original behavior and the statistics have said according to Forbes, that only eight percent of the world's population who set a new year, new year resolution who actually carry it through only eight percent that's very serious how can hundred percent hundred people set goal and only eight of them will actually carry it through this is where the shocker is so you want to make sure that in order for you to make your study plan to be a success discipline yourself to follow through irrespective of what happened i don't care oh maybe a course will tell you eh, hmm, Charlie, some new series be that has come eh? this series hmm, you don't know then they will copy it for you on your laptop or they'll copy it for you on your phone that is if you have a, a huge storage device they copy it for you on the phone. Then you say, hey, this series, Minyampo, hmm. if they are saying it, I can't say anything, you know, so I have to watch it so that if they are saying it, I can also say something. What kind of, what kind of, what kind of dumb excuse is that? Because I've had people who are like, hey. so I ask, why do you watch the telenovela? They say, oh, my friend be copied for me. When we go to work, they'll be talking about it. They will say, Camille did this, and uh, Miguel did this, uh, uh, Alessandro did this, uh, uh, way did this and and i'll just be sitting down there so they've copied it for me so i'm also watching so that when they are saying it i can say some are you are you that are you are you like a tv that people can control you like that your book is there you've designed your own timetable and that day you have uh whatever it is you need to study and you put it down to go and watch telenovela do you know that the more of these things you are watching, the more you are making the actors rich? They have lived their life making their money, and you are living off of it. And the reason for the watching of the telenovela is what even breaks my heart. My friends are watching it. And when we go to work, they will be sharing their thoughts. And me, I can't share anything about it. So me too, I'm watching it. So that if they are talking about it, I can also say something. What kind of dumb excuse is that? That's, that's, that's absent. I mean, I, don't, I can't even think about it. I can't even envelope my brain around that kind of thoughts. And I'm like, are you serious? In order to make your study plan successful, you must discipline yourself to follow through irrespective of what happens. As I said here, my phone cannot ring and someone will say, eh, Ishra, let's go out. Let's go have dinner. Let's go. No, 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 no. 
No, 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 no. It cannot happen. I've built it. I've built a circle. Someone cannot call me and say, eh, this is the new movie that has come. Oh, let's go. Are you are you okay? I gotta call the shop. I have to decide that okay, I want to relax, have some recreation. Maybe I watch some doc documentary on Netflix or maybe Apple TV or on DSTV. Maybe I want I want to watch something, a documentary. Maybe because one of the things I'm very much interested in is how the brain works and uh, knowing more about women, the female gender, how their brain work and everything about them, their genome, everything. Uh, I love that. So I like watching documentaries on that, you know, on Netflix or something like that in that case. I determined when I want to have recreation, not when somebody is controlling me. So please, in 2021, everything I've said will fail if you don't discipline yourself to follow through the timetable. If you don't discipline yourself and you are like the wind, then you are going, then you are going, then you will not become successful. Because there are a lot of you, 31st December 2021, when you are doing crossover or jump over or whichever over you are going to be overing, you will realize that you didn't achieve anything in the year. You realize that you are frustrated. You realize that you couldn't achieve your goals. You realize that you couldn't do anything substantial. Why? Because you were walking around being used like remotes and being directed on what to do. Please, please, if you have designed that timetable based on your peak time and your school's timetable, you want to make sure that you discipline yourself to follow through irrespective of what happened. So there is a new movie in town. I don't care about it. I don't care. I will watch it when I can. Oh, uh, there, there is sports. Uh, this team is playing that team. Oh, I need to watch it. I don't care about it. I've had situations where students literally skip class to watch a football. And they go to the exam more than they feel. Who are you trying to punish? Who are you frustrating? When you, uh, then they will say, oh, I hey, can no play make Jack a dog boy. That is one of the dumbest things poor people say. And I, like I say all the time, when you are making such statements, look at your bank account. When you are making such statements, ask yourself, if your mother calls you to send 10K right now, there is something that you need to, you, you need 10K right now, can you pay that? Your mother calls you right now, send me 10K to solve this issue, or 5K, or 1K. Can you send how much money you got in your account? You sit down, watch series from season one, to season 17, sit down watching series and your books are lying down crying for them. They are crying that take me, please lend me, please lend me, please come and study me. Listen to me carefully. 2021 will be great for you and your study plan will work only if you discipline yourself. Only if you discipline yourself. That is very, very critical. So you've got to discipline yourself. I know some of you like hate me right now. Ishra, you are, you are piercing me too much. But you know me already. If you're a follower of my work, I give it to you like that because I say it the way it has to be said. I'm not here to sugarcoat and try to be politically correct. If you broke, you broke. If what you are doing will make you fail, you will fail. Okay? Passing the ICA exams, the ACC exams, the CFA, the CIMA, the CPA, and whatever exams, that is not based on your luck. It's not based on God loves you. It is based on what you put in, the work that you do in relation to that. That is very, very critical. So please, 2021, you've got to discipline yourself and follow through irrespective of what happens and find out anything that will take your time, anything that will not help you to achieve your goals, say goodbye to it. So be disciplined to follow through with the timetable irrespective of what happens, irrespective of what happens. So these are the six strategies that you can follow or the six steps that you follow in order to design your personal timetable or your study plan to help you to pass the exams. I see some comments coming in. Let me reply to them really quick. Fred Dankwa said, what strategies do I put in place to help me get a good understanding of the accounting standards okay simple number one 
is to go through them one after the other. Go through them one after the other. That's very, very critical. What it then means is that, I don't know if you, you'll be attending lectures or so, something like that. What it means is that uh, you need to uh, have an environment where the, the standards are, take, you, are going, you are taking through the standards very well, one after the other. Now, that's the first stage. Once you understand the principles, you go to the second stage, and that is where you begin to practice questions. So, okay, today you did IAS 16. You understand the principles. Okay, get the question kits, or get any question kits, depending on where you are attending lectures at. Uh, for instance, uh, per, uh, for us, we have question kits available. So when you enroll with us, you get access to the lecture videos, you'll be joining our Zoom sessions, and you also get the question kits. The question kit has a lot of questions on everything, the standards, the single entity and everything. So right after the class like that, you go to IAS 16, then you look at the questions there, then you start practicing them. You don't put the book down, you start practicing them. So first thing, make sure you understand the concepts, the principles underlining each of the standards. Very, very critical. So what is IAS 16 about? What is IAS 12 about? What is IAS 23 about? What is IAS 20 about? What is IAS 37 about? What is IAS 38 about? What is IFRS 15, IFRS 16, IAS 37? What are they about? Understand the principles. The number two, practice a lot of questions. Now, the way I design a uh, uh, financial report, okay, you're asking about the accounting standards, so let me not even go deep, but that is a strategy I would recommend. Go through the standards one after the other, Make sure you understand the underlying principles of each of the standards and then practice a lot of questions under each of the standards. That's how you can understand the standards, hands down, hands down, hands down. So, Fred, that is what I would say there. I hope that once you're asking about standards, maybe you are doing corporate reporting or financial reporting. I believe that you'll be attending lectures. And like I say all the time, make sure you attend lectures. Look for a lecture close to you or where you think you are comfortable with and attend lectures. Make sure that you are thought to understand the principles very well. If not to, you can enroll with us, insurapremium.com at 390 Ghana this and get access to the content and study directly under my mentorship. As I assist you in order for you to really perfect this and understand them very well and pass the exams. Next question from Nete Michelle said, Insura, which three combination will you recommend for level three? Okay. Financial reporting, number one. Public sector, accounting and finance, number two. Uh, then you can add uh, audit and assurance, possibly. Audit and assurance or tax. Between audit and assurance and principle of tax, one of them will work. Because one accounting is a lot of work. FM is also a lot of work, so you don't want to add them to PSA and FR. So PSA and FR down two then if you want to add one to eight between audit and assurance and then principles of tax principles of taxation you can add one of them in that case so that is uh the three combination that i'll recommend for you uh level two if you want to go for three public sector accounting and finance uh financial reporting non-negotiable then audit and assurance and then principles of taxation one of them can be added to it in that case. So that is it, Tete. Nati, sorry, Nati Michelle in that case. All right. Any other questions for me, real quick? Any other questions for me, real quick? Any other questions for me, real quick? So, how to pass the exams? ACCA, ICA, CPA, CFA, ICANN, or whatever it is. Creating a smart study plan. Six steps. Six steps. Step number one, which subjects are you writing? Step number two, what is your academic goal? Step number three, what is your current schedule? Step number four, what is your peak time? Step number five, design the timetable, your personal timetable, based on your peak time and your school's timetable. And then step number six, which is the most important thing, discipline yourself to follow through the timetable, irrespective of what happens. 
discipline yourself to follow through the timetable irrespective of what happens so these are the six strategies that i believe that if you adopt and implement uh today it will help you to design your own personal timetable like i said in the introduction it doesn't matter who you study under with all due respect irrespective of who teaches you you cannot pass the exams by attending lectures once that's all no you've got to sit down and um Chalimonga calls it assiduity. You got to sit down on your ass and be able to do your own studies. Do your own thing. It's called assiduity. Sit down, do your own thing, practice a lot of questions, and make sure that you are able to do work well and prepare well for the exams in relation to that. So that is what I want to share with you today. Thank you very much for joining the stream. Let me know if there are any questions you would want me to address, if there are any things you would want me to share my thoughts on real quick. Remember to also follow me on Instagram. If you are not following me on Instagram at Instagram Premium, uh, because the meeting details will be posted on my Instagram page every day. So you can follow me on Instagram if you are not following me on Instagram and uh, be getting updates in that case. Make sure also that you subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit up the bell notification icon. That way, even if you forget and I go live, YouTube will send you the notification so that you'll be able to join the live stream. And if it's about something that relates to what you are studying, you will be able to benefit and prepare well for your examination. Also note that Monday, 11th of January, 2021, we are starting with our lectures officially uh, on campus as well as online. Uh, and you can enroll and study directly under my mentorship for 390 Ghana cities per paper across all levels. 390 Ghana cities per paper across all levels. Now, this 390 Ghana cities per paper gives you access to our study portal, which means you get access to all our lecture videos. You get access to our e-books catalog. The books that are published, you get the e-versions of the books for free. And then you will also be able to get access to our question kits that will help you to practice a lot of questions and prepare well. You will also be able to join our weekly zoom sessions and even if you miss the zoom sessions the recorded versions of the zoom sessions will also be posted on our study portal and you'll be able to watch the playback as well there and the fifth thing most important thing is that you'll be able to get that personalized one-on-one -on -one session with me where i'm able to assist you in order with my team here in order for you to prepare well for your examination so you visit insurapremium.com you can see uh, the link in the description of the video, insurapremium.com, or go to the Google Play Store and download the Insura Premium application. We now have a mobile application. So download the mobile application on Insura Premium, uh, on the Google Play Store, Insura Premium, download the application, purchase a course. You can make payments using any payments card as well as Momo, and uh, start studying directly under my mentorship. And let me see how I can assist you in order for you to prepare well for your examination. So. Thank you very much for joining the live stream. Thank you very much for the thumbs up, the likes, the sharing of the video. I'm very grateful because we want to create this platform in such a way that people from all walks of life can come in, get access to whatever they need in order for them to become successful in life. So thank you for the support on the channel. I really appreciate the support you guys give me here. Uh, Zimblila, Boombas, good evening. I hope you are doing well. Tyrene Awan. Hi, Tyrene. I hope you are doing well. Um, Zimblila said, please, can one get business management information system book since it's not yet confirmed? I don't know the context of your question, though, but um, you can get the business management information system manual from the ICA. You go to the ICA office and you'll be able to get their manual. Uh, that's a great manual that will help you to be able to prepare well for your exams. I don't really get the context of your question, though, but I think you can uh, get a, uh, books from the ICA uh, office in relation to that. Okay? So you can get the books from the ICA office. Or you can call them. They do nationwide delivery as well. So, hey. I don't know if they do nationwide delivery. I know they do delivery. So you can call them and they can arrange delivery, which you will pay for definitely uh, for you to be able to get access to these books. All right. So 
Thank you very much for joining the live stream. It's always a pleasure coming your way. Martin Aarons, uh, Fauzu, Frederick Mensa, Fred Dankwa, Alhaji Baba. Um, thank you very much and all others for the thumbs up, the hearts, and then the sharing of the video. I will see you same time tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. GMT as we continue with our discussion. I will also give you, uh, uh, I will also be coming away tomorrow with another strategy or uh, video, another content that will help you as we gear ourselves up to uh, start uh, from Monday and continue throughout till you write the exams. Remember, my objective as always is to provide you with assistance you need, the mentorship you need, and hold your hands to be able to prepare well for your examination. But like I say all the time, if really you want the full benefit, because what we do on YouTube here is not enough for you to really be prepared for the exams, you can enroll in our course at insurapremium.com at 390 Ghana cities per paper and get access to me fully and be able to study directly under my mentorship. Thank you very much for joining the stream. Tyron Awan said, sir, where are you from? I'm in Ghana, Accra. So I'm in Ghana, Accra. That is where I am. Uh, that is where I'm from. Yeah, I'm from Ghana. <laughs> I'm from Ghana. I wanted to say a couple of things, but I'm from Ghana. So I'm in Ghana, Accra, in that case. Right, so thank you very much for joining the stream. It's always a pleasure coming your way. I'll catch you same time tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. GMT as we continue with our discussion. Continue to stay connected, share the videos, share uh, the channel, subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, make sure that you leave your messages below because I read all of your comments and we use that to design these uh, uh, live stream sessions so we can help you and help others to become more successful in what you are doing. So stay safe. Take care of yourself. Enjoy your evening. And I'll see you same time tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. GMT, as we continue with our discussion. So take care of yourself and stay blessed. Bye-bye.